at where we came from and where we are, just to, to give you a, a map of what's going on. <laughs> um, where we came from was the 6,000 range break, and we traded all the way down to here, spikes up, down to here, spikes up, goes all the way down to here, down to that 34, 3500 area, right here where I was a buyer. This is our first buy zone off of geometry, spikes all the way up to here to 4300, 4400. Percentage wise, that's a great range. Um, then we went short in this range, right up here. And then it drops back down. We cover our shorts and back into this buy zone here and we start buying again. And it goes to a second buy zone, creates a secondary self-similar geometry, repetitive times, consolidates into this buy zone, then spikes all the way back up. We start selling at above the 61.8% level on here. And then we just kind of stay away from this sell zone, which is positive later on. And it's led to our likely upward movement now because it never traded up here. It never got the supply that it needed, okay? Um, so then we meandered, meandered, and went under 61.8 of this range here, from that to high to low. And we hit the third and final buy zone right down here. Now this whole range is tapped out. and I have some scenarios of what can occur in the future, but this is where we are right here. It is our last buy zone. And this was from 40, um, 34, 30 and under was our last buys which you've seen and whatnot. Um, I had the buys on them and I've been long. Um, so that's what occurred there. Now let's go a little bit shorter term right here. We had the breakout. Um, we went over and consolidated one, two, three, four, five, and went down to here perfectly. And these were two buys that I had. And then we spiked up to the 61.8% of the inside range and pulled back real fast. And this was a fake out. And the logical place for it to go would be right back down here. It never did that. So that's now negative compression um, because it never went down to here and gave us uh, another buy opportunity. Um, this is actually weaker. Uh, and now it's moving up to the 3,800 number and up to here, uh, 3,849 uh, logical. Um, and then we're going to likely get a pullback, but won't discuss that right now. Let's take a look at the bigger picture of what is possible. And I, I pointed this out weeks ago, and I want you to refocus your attention on it. All right, so let's take a look at that. All right, so here we have this pattern, which looks to be coming true. Um, it's traded down to around that, you know, uh, low 3000 range somewhere within here and is now moving up to here, and we'll see if it continues, can go all the way back to the upper 4,000 range. All right, this is one scenario. But it's not a certain scenario. Uh, we have not traded outside of the 4,000. We'd have to break the 43, 4,400 level, and uh, we'll see if that occurs. We'd have to break the uh, even the 3,800 and whatnot. This is another scenario is that we could trade down to the 2000 range, which I would like. Um, that would be, give us great value. And statistically, if this occurs, this is where I would be using more capital and uh, be holding on to Bitcoin. Uh, from here, big profitability can occur. And I, I hope that occurs, but I can't predict that. That's not going to be, you know, that's not what I do. We observe, plan, and execute. I've got all my plans in place dynamics of the market and I've done always very well um, so keep that in mind but that's a picture of where we are and what is possible just so you guys know so there you go I'll have a further update and uh, whatnot again don't expect me to be making trades uh, when you want them to, to be just because you want them <laughs> it's not the way trading works but you know keep things in mind observe plan and execute and trade based off of the market not what you want or your desires and I'll have the video updating the expectations and correctly, um, so you guys can, uh, you know, make your your decisions and judge from there. Other than that, have a great day, and I'll talk to you later.